If you guys don't know me, my name is Brian, uh, along with my amazing wife, Erica. We actually lead the campus ministry at UT. And we've been living here in Austin for about three months. And it has been awesome. Uh, we moved from, from LA, and it's just been great getting to know the city, getting to experience all that is Austin. Um, I still don't really understand why people say Austin's weird. Um, I, I guess it's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's been amazing, and honestly, one of one of the favorite things I've been able to experience so far is the food. I love food. Um, the first time we were here, like uh, Dave and Angela's brought us to Hop Dotties, which is best burger I've ever had. Uh, we were introduced to Torchies. Um, the college students have introduced me to uh, an amazing taco place called Rosita's. And it's been awesome just experiencing it and getting to try all this different food. What it has made very difficult, though, is, is uh, making sure that I stay in shape. Um, I figured that since I would be on campus walking around, meeting people all day, that I would eventually you know, start to shed some pounds and I would be able to be a little more active instead of sitting at a desk all day. In fact, the opposite has been true. Uh, because the food here has been so good, I've actually been gaining weight um, and it's not good. <laughs> I, and also, you know, our, our schedule is just so busy. I, I have to confess. Can I confess with you guys? Uh, over the last two weeks, I have not cooked at all. I've eaten out every single, every single meal over the last two weeks. Um, I know it's my shame. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are so forgiving and that you guys are, <laughs> it's, it, I appreciate that. That's a good, it's a family feeling, you know? Um, but it can be frustrating. I don't know if, if any of you have ever tried to go down that path of losing weight or trying to get in shape and, and, and you know, being healthier. And for me, it's been something that I know I have to do because I have a pretty bad family history. Uh, I had family history of, of heart disease, uh, cancer, uh, high blood pressure, all the fun things that, that you don't really want to have in your family, I have. And so for me, I know being healthy is something that's important. But it's really frustrating because a lot of times I feel stuck. I don't know if you've ever had a day where you went to the gym or you decided, I'm going to start this brand new diet. I threw away all my junk food. And then after the first day, it was really hard, but I got through it. And I step on the scale the next morning and nothing happened. And then I step on the scale the next morning and I actually gained weight, which I don't understand how that happened because I didn't eat anything that day. And it's frustrating because I feel stuck. I feel like, well, this is just, this is just who I am. These are the genes that I have. Like, no one in my family is very thin or fit. Everyone just kind of, you know, balloons up after a certain age. And it's like, well, this is just, this is my life. This is what I'm going to be. And it's easy to make excuses. It's easy to feel like, well, this is just how I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And there's no real way around it. I just have to accept it. And honestly, that, that, that makes, it's not a good feeling. I don't know if you've felt that way before, but it just feels hopeless, it can feel very discouraging. It can feel like I'm, I, I'm just stuck. And, and this actually translates to spiritual issues as well. For me, I, I have trust and anxiety issues. Um, and you say, Brian, well, you're on stage. How can you have anxiety? It's, I'm very good at masking it. Uh, but I, I, I struggle a lot with feeling like I, I'm out of control. If I don't feel like I, I have things in my grasp, I, I tend to spiral. I start becoming bitter, I start becoming performance oriented, and eventually I burn out. And it's this, it's this cycle that keeps going on and on. Like I'll feel, I'll feel stressed, and then I'll go to being controlling, and then when things don't work out, I become bitter, and then I try to grasp onto some control with performance-based Christianity, and then I eventually burn out because I'm so tired of failing. And it's this cycle of again and again and again and I just feel stuck. I feel hopeless. I feel like I, I, I'm enslaved to my circumstances. That I, no matter what I do, everything keeps coming back, and I'm just stuck. And I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but I want to encourage you more this morning. What if I told you that not only do you not have to be stuck, that you were meant to be free? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, the Bible reads, You, my brothers and sisters, 
were called to be free. You were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. The Bible says that we were called to be free. And, and this is something that, that is so encouraging to me because for a lot of my life, I can feel like I'm stuck and I, I'm enslaved to just who I am and the circumstances of my life. But God says here, no, that's not what your life is surrendered to. You don't have to be, in con- you don't have to be controlled by everything that's going on around you because stuff happens. But you don't have to let that affect you. You were called to be free. Take that in for a second. Just for a second. I was called to be free. And we have this freedom to choose where we want to go with our lives. We can choose what do we want our lives to look like. We can choose not to be affected by the circumstances and the things that life throws our way. We're no longer enslaved or stuck. We don't have to be dictated by our circumstances. We have the freedom to choose how we will live because we were called to be free. So what does that look like? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, we're going to go a little bit further down. The Bible says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit is contrary to the flesh. So they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. (laughs) In here, it talks about these two warring sides. And I I don't know if you've ever felt this way before, but there's there's that side of you that says, I want to do right. I I want to be good. I want to have a great life. I want to have a life to the full. And then there's that other side of you that says, well, this is easier. This is what I I feel like doing right now. And they, they fight. And... It's, it's the same when, when, when I, I'm trying to be healthy. I'll stand in line at, at, at a fast food place and I'll be like, I know I should get the grilled chicken. I know I should get the salad. I know I should get water. But that burger looks so good. And the fries, I mean, it's cheaper. And, and the soda is free refills. And so really, I don't want to lose out here. This, this is a better deal. And I, I fight within myself. I look and, and I, I agonize, and then the, the cashier looks at me and starts getting annoyed, like, are, are you, are you going to make your choice yet? There's a line forming behind you, man. Like, you have, you have to decide here. And, and those two, two sides fight within me. In the same way, spiritually, those two sides fight within me. Where I'm anxious and I, I'm like, this, this is too hard. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I, 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 want, I want to be able to control my life. I want to be able to control my circumstances. But over here, I know that I need to trust God. There's a side that's telling me, like, Brian, you need to let go. Brian, you need to trust in me. And, and they fight. And inside of me, I'm like, well, what hap- if, if I let go, what's going to happen? I don't know. How can I trust if, if I don't know what's going to happen? And I, I'm torn. And, and because of that, I tend to go back. And I feel, again, stuck. You see, we have the freedom to choose where we want our lives to go. And the result is that how we choose our our lives to live our lives will determine what our lives will produce. I don't know if any of you have ever planted uh, seeds before. Have you ever tried to grow, uh, grow plants or, or fruit or things like that? As a child, I was actually, I had a, this entrepreneurial mindset. So for, um, I, I saw in my, in my parents, my parents had bought these um, little bean sprouts, the little seeds. And so I thought, you know what I can do is I can, I can plant these. I was, I was like seven. I was like, I can plant these. And what I can do is, is I can grow and I can sell them. Like anyone would want bean sprouts from a, a seven-year-old, you know, growing them in his backyard. Um, but I had this idea of like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant these, and they're going to grow. And then I had my friend who lived next door to me, and I told him, hey, do you want to buy some bean sprouts? He's like, sure, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to make some money. But when I planted these seeds, bean sprouts came up. I wasn't surprised. That's just, that's what happens. I planted, you know, bean sprouts, and, and bean sprouts came up. If tomatoes had come up, that would have been really weird. 
But the result is when we plant something, that's what comes out of it. And so in, in Galatians 5.19, the Bible reads that there are two parts that you can choose to live by. You can choose to live by your flesh or you can choose to live by the Spirit. And in verse 19, it says, this, it's going through and describing this is the fruit of what happens when you, you live by your flesh. When you plant the seeds of your flesh, it says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so let's, let's kind of unpack some of these things for a little bit. Like when I first read, when I first read the scripture, a lot of times I, I thought this was just like a no-no list. This is, as a Christian, these are the no-nos that you do not do. But the interesting is, thing is reading in, in this context, it's saying that this is the fruit of what happens. If you choose to live by, by your flesh, by, by what you want to do, by the desires of your heart, this is the result. The result is sexual immorality, impurity, uh, discord, which I had to look it up because I've heard that term before and, and no one ever really explained it to me very well. So I actually had to find uh, synonyms. One of the synonyms was bad blood. So if, if, you, if you struggle with discord, that means you have bad blood between you and someone else or, or there's conflict or there's, there's arguing and quarreling. Dissensions are actually arguments that lead to discord. So if you like arguing for the sake of arguing and, and, and fighting with people, that's dissensions. Factions is actually discord within a group. It was really cool when I actually had to read that because I didn't know that they were all linked together. Uh, for me, actually, idolatry is the big one. And, and not that I have any statues inside you know, our apartment or anything like that. But idolatry is any time that you, you, you set something of value higher than God. And, and I don't know about you, but for me, I, I love comfort. I love safety because, again, my struggle is, is anxiety and, and, and feeling like I'm not in control. And so for me, a lot of times what I will prioritize in front of God is, is safety. I like to have savings in my bank account because I know that if anything happens, I have the money to take care of it. And not necessarily saying that savings is a bad thing, but when it starts to conflict in my heart with, well, you know, I, I don't want to be generous I don't want to help this other person who's in need because I need to take care of myself first. I need to, I need to work some extra hours and, you know, I, I, I have this side job and, and I need to do these things. And I'm, it might mean that I have to miss out on church or miss out on meeting with that person, but I, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. I want to have nice things. I want to be comfortable. And in, in those ways, I'm setting my comfort and, and my safety and my security above my love for God. And the interesting thing is, is when, he, when, when the Bible says here that, that we can choose our lives, he says you can choose this. You can choose to live by your flesh. You are free. You are free to do what you want. But really, if we are free to do what we want, why would we choose to go back into slavery? When we, when we read the story in, in Exodus about, about the uh, Jews as they left Egypt and they left their captivity, it's a great story. And then when we look at how they, they turn back around and say, it was better in Egypt. We sat around pots of meat and we could do what we want. We had comfortable beds and that was the life. But now Moses, we're out here in the desert and we're probably going to die again today. And it's all your fault. We should go back. And we look at that story and we're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. But we, we can do the same thing because it's familiar. It's comfortable. It's, it's how we lived our lives before. And, and when we step out and we try to live by the Spirit, it becomes uncomfortable. It becomes hard. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves longing for the past, longing for what we knew and what was comfortable, even though we were stuck and enslaved. And the Bible says, you are free to do that if you want. Just know that, that you are choosing enslavement all over again. In Galatians 4 9, he says, why would you go back and be enslaved? Why? All that, that happens from this is it's just a downward spiral. 
that results not only in a miserable life, an unfulfilling life, but it also ends with not being able to be a part of the kingdom of God. And not to bring you all down, but, but this is just kind of the reality. Jesus says, you can choose this if you want. You're free. On the flip side, you can choose to live by the Spirit. And, and, and in verses 22 through 23, he talks about this is the fruit of what happens. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, who, who wouldn't want a life full of joy and peace? Johan, no? I mean, <laughs> it sounds so great, right? Like, I, who wouldn't want to be full of joy? Like Christian shared last week, with the Spirit, we can have joy despite our circumstances. This, this, this feeling that is not marred by, by things that happen in our life or outside things that are out of our control. But we can experience true joy if we are in step with the Spirit. Who wouldn't want to be around someone who is full of kindness and gentleness? I mean, I... I I don't actively seek out friends who are, who are mean and, and, you know, full of hatred. That's just not really my, my normal default. But the Bible says that these are the fruits of what happens when you choose to live by the Spirit. Now, I want, I want you guys to take a second and just imagine. Imagine if your life was full of peace. I'm sure everyone, myself included, we have so many things going on in our lives. We have so many stresses, things that are pulling at us from different angles. Everything needs our attention. And it can be so easy to feel anxious. It can be so easy to feel stressed and frustrated. But God says, you can find a life of peace. You can find a life of joy. And it's not dependent on your circumstances. Imagine your neighborhood. And if your neighborhood was full of kindness, if everyone in your neighborhood said hi, if everyone in your neighborhood shared with each other, everyone in your neighborhood spoke a kind word and helped each other when they were in need, all the time, in spite of circumstances. Imagine a city full of love. Imagine a tribe full of grace. Imagine all these things. It's and Jesus says, this is a promise. This is what happens. When you plant these seeds, when you walk in the Spirit, this is what results. You're not going to get a mango from an apple seed. But if you plant an apple seed and you water it and you keep up with it, fruit is going to come. It's a promise. In Galatians 5, verse 24, the Bible says, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And this scripture to me is, is so encouraging because it says if, if here today, if you belong to Christ, that flesh has been crucified. You don't have to live by it anymore. It's gone. It's dead. You are no longer controlled by it. That lie that, that you have to keep going that way and that, that you will never be able to change is gone. You can live by the Spirit. And, and this was so encouraging for me because I remember a time when, when I was in college and, and one, of my, one of my best friends, we, we sat down, I remember, at a Denny's. And he was going through some stuff and I was like, well, what's going on, man? Let, let me know. Let me, how can I help you? And I remember his the look on his face. It was just, it was just sorrow. And he looked at me and he said, "I can't change my life, Brian. I can't change. I I I I have these things in my life, and I I cannot get rid of them. And I don't want to be a hypocrite anymore. And so, I'm not going to come to church anymore." I don't think God can love me anymore. I don't 
feel like I can be different and I can overcome this anymore. And with that, he left. And for me, just to see how hopeless he was tore apart my heart. But this scripture says, that past is gone. You don't have to be controlled by it anymore. It doesn't have a grip on you because it's dead. It's gone. It was crucified with Christ. And in that moment, you became free. It's also encouraging because it says that, that if we live by the, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. It's telling us that, that the Spirit is along for the journey with us. And I don't know if, if you've ever been on a road trip before, or maybe if, you, if you've run a marathon before, or any type, any type of long-distance thing. It's always easier to have someone with you. On the drive uh, from L.A. to here, my brother actually rode shotgun with me. Um, and it was an awesome trip. It was great to be able to, to spend that time together. But what was also great was that, that we were able just to be companions together. He helped me navigate, you know, even though we had a GPS, there were times where our GPS went out because we didn't have any signal and we pulled out our Thomas guide and tried to figure out, you know, where we were, even though that didn't help because our Thomas guide was from LA. And so, uh, <laughs> for those of you guys who don't know what a Thomas guide is, it's a really thick book about that big, it's supposed to be a map. But it was awesome just to even share in that experience together. It was awesome to be able to share in that experience together. And just to know that if anything happened, he was right there with me. In, in my quest to be healthy, Erica has been my partner. And every time that I, I, I go up to the line and I order a soda, she shoots me a, a dirty look. <laughs> Which I appreciate because she's trying to help me be better. She's calling me higher. Now, whether I choose to, to respond to that dirty look or not <laughs> is a whole other thing. But I have a companion. I have someone that can help me along my way and help me to make better decisions. And the Bible says here that that is the role of the Spirit, that, that we are invited to walk along with the Spirit. We can have a companion as we choose to live our lives, and we have that companion to help guide us. It's really nerve-wracking when, when you have to make decisions and you feel like, I, I, it's all on me. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. It's been nerve-wracking here trying to figure out where to eat because I don't know where the best places are. And I appreciate those of you who have helped guide me into what I should be eating. And if all else fails, I have Yelp. But it's easier to make choices. And the Bible says here that the Spirit is a guide that will show us the way of life to freedom. The caveat is, it is up to us to follow. A guide can only show you the way. We are the ones that have to decide whether we will walk in that way or not. Moving to Austin was a huge leap of faith for me. Again, I'm anxious. I like being in control. I like the familiar and the comfortable. And this has actually been the first time that I've been away, that I've been more than 15 minutes away from my family. Uh, my, me and my family are very close. We've grown up together. We've, we've experienced all kinds of things together. And it has been very hard being apart from them. It's been very hard leaving a comfortable job. It's been very hard moving to a new place and meeting new people and, and honestly not knowing what's going to happen from the day to day. But what was awesome was that in the process to make that decision, the Spirit was with us the entire time. And there were just these little moments that, that the Holy Spirit would be like, go! <laughs> when we first actually came here for, for the interview, I, I told Erica, I'm like, I'm not sure. I don't know... What's in Austin, I don't know what it's going to be like. I imagined that Austin would be desert. Um, it was really different. When I came. Um, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. I, I grew up on an island. I need to be in proximity to the ocean. It's just a thing. And I was like, I, I don't know if, I can, if, I can, if we can do this because if I can't give my heart, I, I'm not going to be able to do this job. 
I'm not going to be able to serve a ministry that I, I don't feel called to serve. And so we prayed, and I was like, all right, God, if, if this is where you want me, I need to fall in love with this place like, like that. It needs to happen. And I remember we got in, I think it was a Thursday night. We had dinner with, with uh, the Hoopers and the Sullivans. And the next morning, we came to church. We came to this church. And I remember tearing up. I remember leaving church and feeling like, this is my family. I remember leaving church and telling Erica, I don't care if they hire us or not, we're moving. <laughs> now I'm so glad that, that, that I was hired. But that was my heart. The Spirit moved my heart. And did it change the fact that I would be away from my family? Did it change the fact that, that I would be leaving a comfortable job? Did it change the fact that I would be packing up my entire life and going somewhere completely new that had only been really for like a day and a half? No. It didn't change any of that. But the Holy Spirit said, Brian, you need to go. Brian, you, this is where you need to, to move. And it took a huge leap of faith but I followed. Now, the crazy thing with fruit, it always comes, but it takes time. Even as a child, I knew that by planting the, the bean sprout seeds, they weren't going to spring up overnight. And, and sometimes we can fall into that trap of, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the Spirit. I'm going to take a step out in faith, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to what He says. And then immediately, something bad happens. We're like, well, okay, obviously that wasn't, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. But in the same way we can't plant a seed, and, and, in the same way we, that we can't plant a seed and, and expect there to be an apple immediately, or in the same way that, that once I start a diet, I, I should not be able to step on a scale and see 20 pounds. Yes, I lost 20 pounds. It doesn't work that way. It takes time. It takes perseverance. It takes staying in step. And that's, that's why I love the scripture. It talks about this relationship that we have with the Spirit. It's not a one and done where someone kind of meets with us for an hour and says, you're good to go? Awesome. It's not like a, that physical that you have with your doctor when you get the checkup. That once a year, all right, let's meet. You're good. Cool. See you next year. The relationship that we have with the Spirit is one of a day-to-day -day walking where we wake up in the morning and he's there. As we go through our day, he's there. As we go to bed at night, he's there. Every step of the way. And we are never alone. To close out, I want to read verse 25 again. It says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Christian life has often been compared to as a marathon. And the Holy Spirit is our running partner and our coach. He's our guide. And we are never alone. As, as tough as the race might be, as difficult as the decisions might be, and as difficult as the circumstances that come into our lives might be, we were called to be free. We are no longer enslaved by our circumstances, by our flesh, our temptations, we are not controlled by that anymore. The Spirit tells us daily, walk with me and let me lead you to a life that is full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. This morning, I, I want to ask us to reflect. Do we want to live the life that we were called to? Obviously. We want to live a life of freedom. If we do, then it requires a commitment. It requires a commitment that, that we stay in step. So are we willing to do what it takes to follow the Spirit daily? When we wake up in the morning, do we pray to the Spirit? And this is something, actually, as we started the series, I, I've, I've started to do. It's felt a little weird because, you know, when we pray, we usually pray to God the Father. But the Bible speaks specifically about 
God being three parts and that, you know, we can speak to Jesus and we can also speak to the Holy Spirit. And so it's been something that I've been trying to do and in, 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 in my effort to keep in step with the Spirit, speaking to Him directly and saying, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? Where do you want me to go today? Tell me to follow you today. We have this ability to be free because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And in a moment, we're going to be taking communion. But I just want, I want us to remember that if it wasn't for Jesus' sacrifice, if he, hadn't, if he hadn't followed the Spirit where it was guiding him to go, we would not be here this morning. We would not have the hope that we have to be free. We would still be stuck in a life of the flesh with all of that that entails. But because Jesus loved us so much, because he looked at us and said, you're worth it. We are able to live a life of freedom. Let's pray.